Yo, what's good, everyone? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we got my boy, Susu, from Head to Head Battles. Gonna be coming on to doing a Grand Maju, one of the most underrated OTK decks in the world. He'll be doing a sick video to show you guys how to OTK with one of the most underrated decks in this format. And if you guys are excited for the video, I want you guys to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and go check out my boy, Susu. Go check out his, his channel down below right now. And then go to truthgaming.com and get the most beautiful play mats you guys will ever see. Anyways, let's get started, boys, on the most underrated OTK deck of the format. Let's go. What's going on, YouTube? My name is Sushu from Head to Head Battles, and I'm doing a guest upload on Triff's channel, yo. Big shout out to Triff Gaming for allowing me to do this. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on both of our channels. And uh, Triff told me, he said, Sushu, Pendulum is the best Psych. deck. And I said, hold up, brother, wait, bro, fam. Give me a second. I don't think Pendulums are the best deck. I think the best deck is whatever deck can go second in this upcoming format. So he said, you know what? Show the viewers what you think the best deck is and uh, let's see what the viewers think. So I want you guys to comment down below what you think the best deck is, Pendulums or Grenmaju? I think uh, I think we know the clear answer here, all right? And if you wanna see like a live duel between uh, the both of us, uh, let me know in the comment section down below and I want you to like this goddamn video and uh, help push Trip through the YouTube algorithm, right? So without further ado, let's get into this deck profile. Okay, this wouldn't be a Grand Maju deck profile without Grand Maju, okay? This is me, this is Susu, okay? If, if, if Trip is Endymion, Grand Maju is way better than Endymion, okay? This bad boy gains 400 attack and defense. For every Banish card face up or face down in your own Banish pile. And if uh, you set this card with 30 cards banished, your opponent will effectively OTK themselves, okay? Next, the best card in the deck. Gizmek Orochi, the Sky Slasher, okay? This deck, you want to see it in your opening hand. You want to be able to get it into the graveyard. This card really allows you to play and survive. There are a lot of times where you don't draw the cards that you need and Gizmek will be that one card that gives you that extra turn to see a draw card or to see the Grand Maju or see anything that you may need. This card activates in hand or graveyard, so it's really, really powerful, okay? The next card in the deck is Eater of Millions. So let's say your opponent passes on nothing or passes on a really crappy board and you have a Kaiju in the hand. You can literally kaiju the thing on field, Eater of Millions, banish your entire extra deck, your entire hand, normal summon Grand Maju, and call it a day. Funnily enough, this card cannot be kaijued, so I want you to keep that in mind because uh, you're the one doing all the kaijuing, all right? Next, we're playing the best hand trap, Nay, the best card in the entire game, Dimension Shifter. Now, I know what you're thinking, okay? A lot of combo decks can't play under Shifter, so when you're playing the new format, and when Cross Out Designator becomes live, the card isn't as powerful. But the but the, here's the thing, right? Like you're playing Kaijus, you're playing all these break aboard uh, cards in your main deck, that even if D-Shifter doesn't resolve, even though you went minus one in the hand, because you go second, you start with five cards next turn, and your opponent does have to use that Cross Out Designator in hand to, you know, cross out D-Shifter. And we're, you know, that's only under the assumption that they're even playing the singular D-Shifter and didn't draw it in their opening hand, okay? Uh, the next card we're playing is Double Necroface. Necroface is really good because if you send it off a Gold Sark, both players have to banish five cards from the top of their deck, right? Which is really powerful. And if you Necroface banish itself, it just procs again. And on top of that, if you Allure of Darkness and you have Necroface in hand, that is a free draw two plus a mill or banish five for, for both players, okay? So this is kind of our Maju engine, right? Like what fuels our Grand Maju. Next, we have our going second card. We're playing double alpha and a single pank, okay? So these cards are obviously cards that are really good going second and the main reason we play it. When you're playing alpha, the master of beasts in conjunction with kaijus, it's a really cool kind of small combo where you can kaiju your opponent, summon alpha, use alpha to return itself and the kaiju back to hand and then kaiju your opponent again. So that's why Alpha is a really good card in any deck that wants to blind second, okay? And Pankertops, obviously, this card is amazing. Going second, it can out Winda, it can out a lot of Floodgates. So I think Pank is another really, really good card. Next, for our Kaiju Engine, we're playing Triple Dogaran, all right? We're playing Triple Godarla, 
And we are also playing triple Gamma Seals. The main thing that all these Kaijus have in common is that they are all level eight Kaijus. Now, um, this will make a lot more sense when we get into the extra deck because we do play a lot of rank eight engine um, XC's monsters in the extra deck, but at the end of the day, this nine kaiju package in a 60 card deck allows you to at least see one mathematically speaking. Okay, next for our danger package, we are playing danger Bigfoot. This card is really good because upon this card, right, even off of a game mechanic, like let's say you have too many cards in your hand and you have to discard a card and it's a danger monster, you still get their effects. Now, Danger Bigfoot and Danger Thunderbirds, these are both really good because not only does it act as draw power, it also acts as uh, board removal, right? Because when you discard Danger Thunderbird off of, let's say, Trade In or Twin Twister, it allows you to pop a face down card, not just a set card, just any card that's face down. And Bigfoot allows you to pop a card that's face up. So that makes these cards really, really have much more utility than you initially give it credit for, right? Uh, the next, the bricks in our deck. This is the only brick in our deck, and it's Hexa True Day. You play 60 cards, but for some reason, this card is always in your freaking hand, okay? Um, this card is really good on summon. It does nothing, but you can use its effect on ignition to pop a card on the field. And if you do that, in the battle phase, you can attack twice. And if you run over a monster over battle, you can make any monster on your side of the field gain 400 permanently. So it's really good and it's a level eight and that really, really does matter, okay? So that's it for our monster lineup. For our spell lineup, we're running the best field spell in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, okay? Golden Castle of Stromberg has an essay on it and no one ever wants to read this card. So this card is basically what allows you to summon Hexa Trude straight from the deck or normal summon it without tributing it from your hand, okay? This card also says that during the standby phase, you have to pay a maintenance cost of Banish 10. The reason we don't care about that is our deck gets fueled by the Banish power, right? And on top of that, Golden Castle is basically a mirror force that burns you for half of the monster attacking. So let's say they have a Grand Maju with a gajillion attack and they attack into, you know, they attack into the Golden Castle of Stromberg, they'll literally OTK themselves, okay? So if your opponent asks you what this card does, definitely tell them, but if they don't, watch them suffer, okay? Um, next, I think this is the best removal in the game because not only does it remove things, um, there's no restrictions as like, oh, there can't be cards on the field or anything like that. And it summons you a level eight Kaiju to your side of the field and summons you a Kaiju to their side of the field. So if you have this in alpha in hand, you automatically have a rank eight play, right? Because you activate this, you give them Godarla, give yourself Gamma Seal, and then you summon Alpha from the hand and you overlay into Lancelot, attack directly, and then now you have a free Zeus, right? Uh, next, we're playing Triple Mystic Mine. There are a lot of times where you open a Kaiju and nothing else, but if you have a Kaiju and Mystic Mine, generally, uh, most combo decks only set up one, maybe two Omni Negates. So if you can play through all that, and which you can, because you know we do play a lot of draw cards in the in you know in the deck. Um, Mystic Mind is oddly easy to resolve in this deck and a powerful card nonetheless, right? Next, we're playing our back row removal in Twin Twister. Now, the reason we're playing Twin Twister over Lightning Storm or Harpy's Feather Duster is for one reason and one reason alone. This card says discard one card, which means that our dangerous proc once discarded off a of Twin Twister, right? And we also can even discard Gizmek Orochi from our hand to the graveyard to activate Twin Twister. And we don't, you know, lose any card advantage because Gizmek activates in the graveyard, right? Um, twin Twister is really powerful because if you're playing a back row and you Twin Twister pitch Thunderbird, even if they somehow negate the Twin Twister, you can activate Thunderbird in a separate chain and still pop a card that's set. And technically speaking, if you baited out one of their cards because they needed it to stop to Twin Twisters, then Thunderbird also pops a set card, meaning Twin Twister technically resolved anyway, because two of their back row are gone, okay? Now we're playing our draw power in the deck. We're playing triple Pod Desires. Um, Pod Desires in this deck is literally draw two. We play so many powerful cards in this deck that we really don't care what we banish, right? Because technically us banishing this stuff is fueling our gameplay anyways, right? Next we're playing triple Allure of Darkness. Allure of Darkness is really good. We do play a lot of darks, um, in our deck, 
And if you D shifted your opponent and you draw another shifter, but have a lure, um, D shifter, necro face, like most of your engine are dark. So you will always have fuel for the alert of darkness. Now, if you are feeling kind of cheeky, you can go for a blind alert, but I definitely don't recommend it. All right. Next, we're playing triple trade in everything in our deck minus the necro face and eater are rank eight or rather level eight. So trade in is always like 95% of the time, very, very live. And if you open multiple Kaijus or if you, you know, open multiple dangers, you can trade in, discard a danger, get a pop and draw two, which is really, really nice. Okay. Uh, and finally, for our last spell card, we're playing one Dimensional Fissure, one Terraforming, one Monster Reborn, one Gold Sark, and one Mind Control. So obviously, we are playing a lot of powerful one ofs, and you're probably wondering to yourself, like, okay, so what if you banish these cards? But to be quite honest with you, it doesn't really matter. Even if you banish all the powerful one ofs, that's just how good the engines in this deck really are. Okay, so that's it for our spell lineup. We are not playing any traps. That was a 60 card main deck. And let's go over to our extra deck. Okay, all right, guys. So let's move over to the extra deck. This extra deck is really spicy because in the main deck, we are playing a lot of level eights. And the reason we're doing that is so we can play a large rank eight utility package in our extra deck. Okay, so for the Susu special, Draglubion, Numeron Dragon, and Hope Harbinger. Draglubion basically cheats you out Numeron Dragon with Hope Harbinger as material underneath it. And this allows you to attack your opponent for 9,000 damage. Numeron Dragon, when you detach for uh, its effect, gains 1,000 attack points for every rank on the field. So even if you have just these two, that's nine ranks, which is 9,000 damage, okay? Next, we are playing our Zeus package in Dengirsu, Lancelot, and Zeus and Pain Gainer. So the reason we play Pain Gainer is because you can overlay this on top of the Dengirsu or the Lancelot to give you a four material Zeus. Zeus is a really powerful card because it basically doesn't allow your opponent to play next turn or after you clear their board already. There are some instances where you don't OTK them immediately and you need Zeus on the field and Pain Gainer is an amazing tool for that because Dengirsu upon summon will send a card, then you can attack and then overlay the pain gainer on top of it, or you can make the Lancelot attack directly, pop a card, and then overlay pain gainer, and then Zeus on top of the pain gainer, okay? Now for our utility, we are playing Sanifond. This is kind of like our quote unquote uh, budget abyss dweller. We are playing Heliopolis, uh, double Heliopolis, um, but this Heliopolis can be a second Zeus, and we are playing Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord for the Monster Negate. There are times where obviously your opponent will want to make you go first. And you know, you can decide whether you want to make Hope Harbinger or Photon Lord. But after you guys see the side deck, you'll kind of see why all of that's kind of pointless, all right? Uh, next, for our uh, OTK package number two, we're playing one Hita, one Selene, and one Access Code Talker. Um, obviously, Access Code Talker missed a reprint in the Megatons, so this card is expensive. And I never, I rarely see myself going into this. Um, more often times than not, I am going into the BLS. BLS is really good against decks like Sky Striker or decks that like need to target but can't get over a large monster. Um, BLS is really also good because it banishes. Um, it becomes a big beat stick. Um, overall, I think it's a very good utility card in the extra deck. So that sums it up for our extra deck. Let's move on to our side deck. So when you win the die roll and you opt to go second, most players after you stomp them game one are gonna wanna make you go first. So to side for that, we are playing triple DDG, all right? We're playing triple, there can be only one. We're playing triple summon limit. We're playing one macro cosmos, so that's 10 cards. And then you can supplement the rest and I would really recommend anti-spell fragrance or demise of the land, three or two or you know, three anti-spell fragrance, two demise, or the other way around. So the reason you're playing this type of side deck is you, your Kaiju engine and your going second card, so basically your double alpha, your pank, um, your nine card Kaiju engine, plus three slumbers, you can side out those 15 cards to put in going first cards, right? So like, let's say you put a spell negate on the field in the form of Hope Harbinger, and you set all these cards phase down, um, not only do you have a negate for Lightning Storm or anything else they may have, um, you can also you know, flip the anti-spell fragrance, flip the summon limit, flip the demise of the land, because 
um, you know, you still play Mystic Mind in the main deck, so Demise comes up a lot. Um, but I think this side deck makes it really, really interesting on how the gameplay kind of like unfolds as you play the game. Because now, if you do win game two, sure, whatever, you know, you beat your opponent 2 0, oh, but let's say you don't and you move into game three, your deck is built to go second, and most decks will not have a side deck competent enough to deal with these cards because you know you can't really stop gaming mechanic right even if they cross out designator a kaiju which no one in their right mind will do you can still kaiju your opponent because it's a gaming mechanic you're tributing right so um i think overall this deck is really powerful in the upcoming meta because you know you're dealing with decks that put up towers that are easily out of bowl you know with kaijus you're you know dealing with decks that need their graveyard to play and you know this grand module deck deals with all those problems and allows you to win games right now um for those of you that don't know i've topped an extravaganza with this deck i've topped multiple events with this deck and many others but this deck being the most fun to play all right guys so i hope you guys really enjoyed this deck profile guys make sure to support triff gaming by subscribing to his channel liking this video and commenting down below do you think Pendulums are better or is Grand Maju better, all right? I want you to put down in the comment section down below, hashtag Team Maju or Team Pens, all right? Because I'm honestly, I want to know, all right, guys? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Also, check out our channel over at Heads Head Battles. We're on YouTube, on Twitch. And if you want to see a live duel between Triff and I on Twitch or YouTube, I want you to let the man know in the comment section, all right, guys? Triff, thank you for this opportunity. I love you so much. Mwah! Hugs and kisses. I freaking love you guys so much. This is Susu from Head to Head Battles. Signing out.